Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our dinner table project session number four. This is Ms. Clark. I'm the principal at Lakewood Elementary School here in Hardin County Schools. And today we have the Lakewood Elementary Family Resource Coordinator. Chair is called in and she's going to be making Parmesan crusted chicken with bacon. So Ms. Lutz, our art teacher at Lakewood Elementary School. She's been teaching a lot about color in the art room. And then she's been hanging them all in the hallway at Lakewood, which we were all enjoying when we were in person. But now that we're on NTI, we thought we would share a couple of the pictures with you guys so you can enjoy them at home. And one of the things that Miss Sletz took time to teach the kids, this is for the third grade students. She taught them about Georgia O'Keeffe and her painting, Lake Georgia Autumn. And then she had the students recreate that painting using watercolors and the kids did an excellent job. That was Chloe's picture. This is Tyler's, Braley's, Easton's, and Kinsey's. All of those kiddos and all the third graders did an excellent job incorporating color into their Georgia O'Keeffe painting. So I'm going to turn it over now to Cheris and our family that's here from Lakewood to help her cook this evening. I would like to take the time now to introduce Brom Washburn. He's a third grader at Lakewood Elementary and his mother, Kathy Turner, she is his mother. And they're going to be helping me tonight, uh, hopefully enabling me to provide this wonderful meal for, well, them and Ms. Clark and Ms. Tony Williams from the Extension Office. Thanks, uh, all thanks to the Extension Office and Communicare's uh, Regional Prevention Center for kind of initiating all of this and collaborating it all and, and getting it all together. Uh, just a reminder that this box here is where you put your cell phones and, and devices when you're having the meal in the evening with your family. Um, we encourage open-ended questions and things of that nature. So you're gonna wanna turn the oven on to 350 you're going to want to go ahead and put your bacon in a pan and start frying that up. So you've already turned your oven on 350. You're now working on the bacon. Now, until that process is complete with the bacon, because I love to use the bacon grease along with other oil that needs to be uh, added in a moment, we're going to go ahead and make the mixture for the, uh, for the chicken. One egg and how many tablespoons or teaspoons of water am I supposed to get? One. One. One tablespoon, all right? Or teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Tablespoon? Yeah. Tablespoon. All right. So I didn't have one tablespoon, so I've got a half one. So I'm going to do two. All right. Miss Kathy, if you would mix that up for me over here. And as she's mixing that up, we're going to take the chicken. The chicken, um, the recipe calls for four chicken breasts. You can see they're relatively large. What I like to do is kind of cut them in half, but for tonight, I'm, I'm leaving them as it is. You're going to want to take the fat off of them. So you're going to take a knife. You're going to cut all the fat that you see off of the chicken breast. Now remember, we've already washed it, so that has helped spread the chicken where we have a nice, clean cut of chicken. Now, once that's cut, we're going to put it in the dip here. So that's one chicken, and here we've got three more that we need to take care of. And the bacon might need to be flipped. There's... And the, Yay, thank you, Miss Clark. We don't want to burn the bacon. Although some people, it's a big debate whether you like your bacon barely done or crisp. This recipe calls it to be pretty crisp because you're going to crumble it on top of the chicken at the end. So we're just about good on the bacon. Now we need to, at this point, Go ahead and let's see what the paper says next, Brom. Okay, that's what we need. Half a teaspoon of salt. Now this is going to go into the Parmesan. Uh, there's a sheet on there that says how much Parmesan we need. Now I grated this Parmesan by getting a, a Parmesan wedge, which is kind of expensive, but it does last a long time and it makes it fresh. 
But I use a cheese grater, and Brahma's going to help me add some more cheese. It calls for three-fourths of a cup of Parmesan cheese. But since the chicken was so big, we're probably going to need a little bit more cheese, and that's where you're going to come in, Brahm, and you're going to be able to um, add some more cheese to this, okay? All right, so we're going to put the uh, half of a teaspoon of salt in. And what about pepper? It asks for pepper, I think. One-fourth a teaspoon. So we're going to do one-fourth a teaspoon of pepper. Okay. Okay, um, now we need the garlic. Okay, one-fourth a teaspoon of garlic. So we're going to put all of this into this bowl that we had the Parmesan in. I like a little bit more garlic, so I put a little bit more. That's up to you. Okay. Now, we'll take that mixture, and we're going to mix it all up. All right, here is the grater for cheese, and this is going. This is the cheese that's going up and down. This is wonderful for your kids to do at, at any age, really. I just suggest a big bowl because it does kind of tend to fly everywhere. So, Brom, you're going to take this. Miss Kathy, you're going to take it, and you're just going to go like this. Okay? You do that? All right, just do that for a little bit, and we're going to have you do that with the Asiago cheese. Okay, the recipe called for one half to three fourths cup of oil. Now, I like to keep the bacon grease in there because I love bacon, and it does tend to give it a little bit more flavor. That is a lot of oil, but the reason why is because the oil needs to get really hot to brown and sear the cheese. I'm going to do a little bit more just because the pot, the pan that I'm using is wide and deep. All right. Also, while you're cooking, you're going to want to make sure that you have a container to put the old grease in once it cools down. But you can't. You really shouldn't be putting it in your sink. It will clog it up. Probably don't want to throw it outside, do some damage to your landscaping. So you have a container, which I have brought with me, that you can put the old grease. So now we're going to turn the uh, um, stove top up higher because this grease really needs to be hot. One of the reasons why I kept some of the fat of the chicken is because that will help me range how hot the oil is. So if I put the oil in, uh, I've already put the oil in, I put the chicken in, it fries up really good, then I know it's ready for the cheese Parmesan chicken. All right, so we're good here. Thank you, Brom. Thank you, Miss Kathy. You want to mix that up here? That's all cheese. Here, here's the end product. It's cheese grated. All right, I'm going to share some more awesome artwork from Miss Lutz's classes. And our fifth grade students have been working on mandalas. And they created these through several different steps. They made a background uh, where they took markers and mixed it with water to give it a lot of color. And then they made a stamp um, as part of the mandala. They carved it into styrofoam. And then they took black marker over top of that styrofoam and imprinted that stamp over top of the really colorful background. And it turned out to be these really awesome uh, pictures created by our students. These are by fifth grade students. This one's by Trayvon. So great job, Trayvon. And then we have one here by Addison. Lots of blues and purples, really cool, calming colors. And then we have one by Chloe. Lots of orange and yellow and red, really bright and sunny kind of colors. So they did a great job on those. Then another project that she's had the students working on, these are with our first grade students. She's been teaching them a little bit about the artwork from Japan. And so she had them do Japanese cherry blossoms using watercolors, crayons, and tissue paper. So these have a little bit of texture to them. All of these little pieces on here are tissue paper that's like um, I can feel that when I touch the painting. This is Marissa's, and she did an awesome job on her cherry blossoms. And these are first graders at Lakewood. Kanan's cherry blossom. Great job, Kanan. Here's Emmett's. Lots of great color there for Emmett's. And then Marlena. Or Marla, yeah. Yeah, Marlena. 
Marley, what I call her. There's her beautiful Japanese char, uh, cherry blossom. And then finally, our fifth graders um, had another project, um, another art project from Japan. Um, I believe it's called No Tan Paper Art. And they did these really cool um, kind of like symmetry kind of things. So you can see like these images were cut out and then they were laid over this way and glued on those papers. But again, the background color, really pretty. This one is done by fifth grader Trenton. And then this one's another fifth grader named Trent. And we have Ellie's, kind of cool. And Josie, great job, fifth graders. I did um, want to add that oh, uh, some of you are on keto diets. You can also add breadcrumbs to this Parmesan cheese. It's not going to hurt anything. And actually, depending on how big your chicken is and whether you cut them in half or not, um, that will limit the breading that you have. So by adding um, just some breadcrumbs will not damage the, the product at all. I do it. Some people like the Italian um, seasoning. Uh, some have their own kind they like, and that's perfectly fine. Just throw it in there. And then uh, mix it up here, just like we did. And actually, the steps are almost finished. I know this sounds like it's a lot of process, but they're once they're in the pan and they come out of the pan, we then are going to put them in um, – Something similar to this. If you have a rack, it's the best thing because it will keep it from sticking to the bottom. But say you do not have a baking rack, you can spray this down or you can even use some of the oil and lay it down on the Reynolds wrap. And at that point, you would be able to put it on in the oven. So we are going to check and see if this grease is hot enough by putting a piece of chicken it's hot, but not really as hot as I'd like for it to be. You'll see why, because, um, and I'll go ahead and test that method and show you. The reason why is because the hotter the oil, and this is, this is where I wouldn't have kids around because it will splatter. So I'm going to go ahead and put some in here. So Ms. Kathy has soaked up the chicken into this water and egg batter. So we're going to now put it in the cheese. And I actually need a spoon here. And the reason I need a spoon um, is because I take it and spread it around the chicken. So I've got the cheese on the bottom, and I do that, mash it down. So the front and back of the chicken is covered. All right, so I'm going to do that. And yes, cheese will stick to your hand. All right, you may want to shake off a little bit of the loose Parmesan. So you see here, here is the chicken. It will look like this. So you see you got it front and back. All right, now here comes the craziness. All right, that's starting to fry. I'm going to now go ahead and do one other. Believe it or not, this process is just about complete. There's no more room in the pan for this last one, so we're going to just hold off, leave that in there, flip it. There you go. See how it's got golden brown? And it stayed, so the oil was, in fact, hot enough. All right, now we do have enough room for the other piece of chicken in here. All right, so we are just about ready to wrap up this part of it. As soon as that gets golden brown, what you're going to do is take that out, take the chicken out, lay it on your rack, put it in the oven. Instructions says 20 minutes, but please check your chicken. Depending on the thickness, it's going to be more than that. Uh, you want your chicken well, um, well done. You want it to be perfect and, and not cause anyone to be sick. What I typically do after the recommended amount of time I will take a knife, cut the thickest part of the chicken, see how well it looks, then place it back into the oven for an additional few minutes. 
Okay, so we are just about finished with this. Um, I do want to let it simmer just a little bit more to make it a little bit more brown. Um, so I think this would be a perfect opportunity. Uh, I will say this, the only other steps left to do is uh, Ron will be shredding Asiago, Asiago cheese. <laughs> and we will be crumpling up bacon on top of the chicken. And that is where we chicken is finished. We put it back into the oven under broil. So the cheese is melted and uh, crisps up the bacon even more. Guess what? Then you're finished. Hello, everyone. As you all know, my name is Tony, and um, I am the Snap Ed assistant here at the Hardin County Extension Office. But one of the things that I would like to talk about is food budgeting, um, especially when you're out grocery shopping, is to you know look for things that are on sale, things that um, you're going to use, you know, within those three days. Um, don't over overbuy and then have stuff that goes to ruin in the refrigerator. Um, even when you're cutting up your vegetables, um, just keep in mind um, that you also can use frozen if you don't want to use the, the fresh because with frozen, you can also put it back in the freezer and use it for um, a later time. And then plus it saves you from chopping and cutting, you know, up different um, ingredients and stuff. Never go to the grocery store hungry. That's one of my main things that I say when people are out shopping. Don't go hungry because you buy stuff that you really don't need or it'll just be an, an excess or it takes you out of your budget. Um, just remember to um, practice social distancing, washing your hands, um, keeping everything you know, safe for you and your family. So at this time, I, that is all that I have. And as they are getting the prepared chicken out of the oven, we're going to see. And remember, the temperature for cooking chicken and turkeys, it has to be 165 um, degrees internal when cooking. So this is the finished chicken with bacon. And Brom, I think, is going to help shred some cheese. Yep. I, yeah. I did forget to take the bacon off and crumble it, but that's all all right. We can do that. Okay, Brom, you ready? We're going to just put this all over the, the, the chicken here, okay? Just like you did before. You don't want to touch the pan because the pan is hot. There, there you go. go. See, this is something that, that any any kid, well, I'd say four and up could do. Um, maybe not over the heat hot pan, but a third grader is perfectly capable of this. Good job. The more the cheese, the better. Yep. Cheese it up, Ron. There you go. Perfect. Good job, buddy. And then after um, uh, the uh, right amount of cheese is on the chicken, we're going to crumble the bacon, put it on um, back in the oven, put it on broil for 10 minutes. That is up that, that minute. It depends on your oven. You know your oven best. It could be just five minutes. The whole idea is that you want to melt the cheese on top of the chicken. All right, now we're ready to crumble the bacon that I just cooked earlier today, or just a few moments ago. Rami, you want to do this? You just take it and crinkle it. There's your piece. This is the fun part. Okay, so here's the product. It is not the finished product. But we're going to put it in the oven for bro on broil, and then we will start our activity, which is making slime. We need what is that? Say eight ounces. Eight ounces of what? Of glue. Of glue. Cool. So that's about two of these. All right. So bro. Get busy squeezing there, bud. So we're going to squeeze that in there. All of it, yep. Okay. So there's our eight, our eight ounces of glue. And then, Ron, can you read that? One tablespoon of fat baking soda. One tablespoon of baking soda. Let's get about one tablespoon. Got to be all the way full, though. 
And then you can sort of level it off, dump that in. That and one and a half to two tablespoons of contact solution. So a tablespoon again wrong. So we're gonna squeeze all that in. What is this? it's contact solution? So it sort of activates the mixture. So dump that in. And we have to have at least one and a half. And then we need a, yeah, Ms. Clark is gonna get us, get you a spoon, dump that in. So that's really the activator. So now Bronx start. Stirring that up, buddy. Stirring that up. And then it should get thicker. Keep on spinning, keep on doing that. It should get stickier and stickier and stickier. And now we can, and then when you can add food coloring to it. What color do you want to do, Brown? Let's do blue. Or do you, what two colors can you mix to make another color? I want red and blue. So why don't you drop a few colors of red and blue in there? And what's that going to make? Purple. Put a few drops of each in there. And Ms. Clark, I don't know if it doesn't firm up, what do you, what are we supposed to do if it doesn't start firming up? That means you either need more of the contact solution or more of the glue. Depends on the consistency of it, really. It's sort of slow. It's, it's not kind of it's not firming up real good. I would maybe put a little bit more of that contact solution in there. You just do is, one. Yeah. Has always been our issue every yep. time we've tried. So here, Brian, you wanna keep stirring that stuff up, buddy. Okay, you can keep stirring. And it is turning what color? Purple mm -hmm. a little. So you gotta keep on stirring it. And it should firm up. Yep, it should over time. So one thing on the contact solution, you gotta make sure you get a kind that's a cleaning contact solution, not just regular saline. Because so cleaning multi yeah, multi-purpose and it has what it has in it, what you're looking for it to have is like a, a sulfate or a boric acid in it. That's the same thing that's in that borax mule team laundry soap that's some in some of the uh, slime recipes that you see out there. Well, I don't know. Let's. Miss Clark has done this quite a oh. bit. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good, Brom. I think I'd pick it up and see what it does in your hands, man. That's fine. You want to pick it up? Play with it a little bit with your hands and mix it a little bit more. It won't hurt you. Okay. It's just so. glue. There you so, go. Now, now <laughs> Kathy has some too. It's Fun. Sticky. It is sticky. Yeah. It's sticky. It's sticky. You got to keep kneading it with your hands, you Ron. Keep it with keep your going, hand. man. So if, that, if it keeps on doing this, should you add more to it or just keep? What is your suggestion, Miss Clark? Well, I'm like you, Miss Kathy. I just keep playing with it until I figure it out. And sometimes it never works the way I want it to. Well, but it's just the fun of making it, you know? It is the fun of making it. Yeah. And it's sort of like a science experiment. Experiment. It looks like grape gum you know to what? me. I think it's actually. It actually is pretty good, yeah. That's what it's know. supposed to be like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I you did this. Something. No, well, it's right. That's right. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, yeah. Brom, I think. It's pretty fun right there. I just want to see it. You want it? Well, here. You well, you take, it, take at it, buddy. At it, I'm sure Mom would love for you to take that yeah. from her. <laughs> So it's a definitely an outside activity, most likely. Yeah. But it does peel off easy. Yeah. But don't let it get on your furniture. It is very sticky. Make sure you do it outside and probably not with your school clothes on. That's cool. That is neat. Awesome. Very good. Okay, good. And now there you is got, your slime. And you got, now you got some really cool slime there. Yeah, it you've needed it. Yeah. You got to use your hands. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight uh, for the dinner table project. And we've got Miss Tony, I think, has something to give out to our helpers tonight. Is that correct, Miss Tony? Yes. We appreciate our partners at the Cooperative Extension Office and uh, Community Care RPC. And they've got some goodies for us tonight. What do we got, Miss so Tony? We have, um, as you see, we did a lot of measuring tonight. So we got collapsible measuring cups. Cool. We have some measuring spoons that look like a peel bottle, but it slides out and it has all of the um, measuring things. And we have a measuring cup. Um, Communicare donated um, a whole bunch of pizza cutters. Um, and as when we moved from the old building to over here, 
we had these books that was already put together, uh, recipes for a healthier you. Cool. So it has all types of recipes in fruit pizza, um, pineapple chicken, quick veggie soup, and stir fry cabbage. And also we have been dealing with planning, meal planning, which is one of um, the things that we have that helps to keep you in budget when you're, when money is tight and things are, you know, planning a meal ahead of time for the week will help you to save money. And as we also know that um, we're going to be doing a lot of potatoes. So we have a, a vegetable peeler and a brush for you to wash your potatoes before it goes. So these are some of the little items that we have and also a cutting board to go along with um, for them participating on tonight. And we thank y'all so much and for doing it. I thank you for this. I don't have a lot of those items that really do help out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> thank All you right. so You're much. Welcome. I do appreciate that. Anything else, Ms. Sarah, yes. before we go? Oh, finished product. Oh, let me see. Oh, that looks delicious. Can't wait to dig into that.